Hello and welcome to the October edition of Cycling Weekly's Tech of the Month. And we've got another trio of products, haven't we? We have, indeed. So what have we got? Something very special. Check this out, right? Lightweight Meilenstein Obermeyers. So, See, I can't believe this. I, you're not even a tech writer anymore and you're still getting better tech than us. <laughs> What's going down? <laughs> well, um, it's the hill climb season. We're in October. Yep. I'm doing a project on hill climbing and building the ultimate hill climb bike. And for that, I've picked these as wheels um, because they are amazing. So these are the tubular version and they come out at about 940 grams a pair. Wow, for less okay. than a kilo, Including which is skewers. incredible. Um, skewers add on a little bit more, but they are like titanium, mega lightweight, amazing skewers. They're incredibly expensive. Uh, handmade in Germany, uh, they're just under £5,000, right? So you want to know, are they any good? Are lightweights any good, right? Yes, but there's an important thing to know. So <laughs> although they are sort of 50 millimetres deep, they're not really an aero wheel. They've got this V-shaped profile, and that is by... It's just nowhere near as aero as a U-shaped profile that you get on a zip or an Envy rim. But what they are is ridiculously light, as the name suggests, and also incredibly stiff. I mean, I don't think there's gonna be a wheel set for less than a thousand grams that is anywhere near as stiff as these. Um, and the reason for that is the rim um, and the hub flange design with these carbon spokes. So what the rim actually does is it's perfectly in line with the angle of the spoke into the hub flange. And so that just creates the ultimate stiffness as it's woven into the, the rim. And so, yeah, what that creates is an incredibly light, incredibly stiff, incredibly sort of strong wheel. Um, but for hill climbing, especially, is perfect. What's the prize money like for winning a hill climb race? You're going to have to win a lot of hill climbs <laughs> to pay for these. <laughs> But I think everyone knows, you know, us lot, we're always drawling over a set of lightweights and always want to yeah. get a pair in. Yeah. I think Henry Robertshaw tested a pair on um, a previous bike uh, and he loved them. Again, super lightweight, but the aero does let you down. But that doesn't really come into it on a hill climb. Yeah, aero's not really that important on a, on a steep British short hill climb. Um, yeah, uh, the, the lightweight and the stiffness is, is what you're going for. Bruce. Well. Mr. Practical is back. Yes. Unlike Bridgewood with his silly lightweight wheels. Well, we're heading oh, in that on. time of year where the nuts are drawing in. And I've brought some lights. Nice. Because that's who I am. <laughs> like to be safe on the roads. So these are from uh, Light and Motion. Uh, they're the Vibe Pro Combo Commuter, which is quite the mouthful. But they're pretty cool. These are pretty good for commuting as well. Yeah. yeah. Survive a lot of potholes. <laughs> yeah. Be flying. You'd be home in no time. You would, wouldn't you? Yeah. Be good if you're on the top of a hill. Anyway, I'm talking about lights. <laughs> Get out. Uh, these are both a headlight and a tail light um, with their mounts. And they're pretty funky looking. They're a uh, clear coat. So I watched a video on how they're made. So that's all the electronics in there. They took some uh, inspiration. Oh, I set it off. They <laughs> took some inspiration off the robots that stopped the um, Deepwater Horizon oil spill. Okay. Um, I don't really know. Well, I don't know. Ro robots yeah, stopped so the Deepwater yeah. Horizon. <laughs> so what happened in the film? <laughs> <laughs> it just blew up. <laughs> the robots capped the oil vents. I don't know. That film's totally inaccurate, um, isn't it? I mean. And this is what light motion have ended up with from that. Anyway, it's uh, an eco-friendly design stamped around the electronics, which is what you can see in there, uh, is all the circuit board. But more excitingly, these are motion sensitive. So you plug them into your mount like this. It turns on and it pulses and it flashes. And, uh, and if, if you don't move for a long time, it turns off to save the battery in case you forget to take them off your bike. Right. Um, and if it's off and they're like this and you start riding, it turns on. So, you know, if you ever ride... So there's no buttons in there. There's no buttons involved at all. Uh, it's all about just plugging it into the mount and it turns on. 
Um, and it does this automatically. So it like pulses and then it flashes because light and motion say that uh, lights that flash continuously actually can affect a driver's uh, per perception of depth. Okay. So the pulsing uh, helps a driver know how close they are to a rider and the flashing is there to warn the driver to that immediate like there's something right ahead of me. Sure. And they're USB rechargeable. Yeah, well. this is really cool. So you just plug them into your laptop. So the headlight pumps out 200 lumens and the rear light pumps out 100. So it might not see them like a lot and they're definitely be seen rather than 2C lights. Yeah, yeah. But in traffic, they, they definitely get you seen. Another cool thing that they can do is they can also tell the type of lighting. So they have an ambient light sensor. So in the day, it's pulsing and then at night, it is steady. So it um, just changes to the light conditions, really, which is also so pretty it's cool. A light for all your conditions throughout the winter. So I brought my helmet. Um, so uh, it's from Met. Uh, it's not available yet. It will be available in December. The keen eyed viewers would have seen this already on the guys at UAE and Dimension Data. And it's the Met Trenta helmet. Uh, Trenta in Italian is. 30, uh, and this celebrates 30 years of Met cycling, Met helmets. So what's special about this helmet? So it's very lightweight for a start. Uh, it comes out at around 215 grams, which is fairly bang on to what Met have been saying, which is good. Um, on our scales, I weighed them with this special rear light, uh, and it comes out just over 230 grams. Uh, and basically this is a detachable, attachable, uh, rear light. Um, comes, comes with, will it come with the helmet? Uh, I'm not 100% sure, um, but it certainly, it goes with uh, Met's uh, rear retention, retention yeah. system anyway. Uh, so it doesn't look very bright compared to your lights uh, there, but in the right conditions, I'm sure that will look good. But this basically just clips on um, to the rear retention system of your helmet, and you can go through some flashing modes um, there, which I think is just a nice little touch, just to give a bit of visibility, yeah, cool. uh, especially during this time of the year. They're saying it has low drag. Uh, I'm not quite sure the numbers just yet, uh, but it has 19 vents. And the vents are designed uh, just to basically push the air through the rear port at the back, uh, which is also designed with its squared edge. A bit like a specialised evade at the Almost. back, isn't it? Square tapered edge is designed to sort of neutralise that air behind you, helping to reduce that drag as well. It's not the most aero helmet. You know, they have the Mantra, which is their fully dedicated aero road helmet, which we quite like, uh, and it's featured in our Techno before. I think I like it. I've been wearing it. It fits really nice. It's really comfortable. I haven't overheated at all. Not that it's been particularly warm in the UK anyway. Uh, and it just looks great on. I think, you know, the guys at UAE and Dimension Data look pretty cool on it. Um, they've had no complaints. There's been no horror stories. Uh, but as I say, this is the prototype version. Um, Met say that this is pretty much there with the finished article and they just need to sort of finalise because uh, the, the last few carbon bits. looks really cool. Actually. It does, it's yeah. Cool that's going to stay, it? but it's just going to have a slightly better finish um, from what they say to me. Uh, and I haven't got a price just yet. That's the only other thing. Uh, we're waiting on prices, but availability, availability uh, is around December time. So look out for that. Uh, so that's our three products. I guess we should move on to our bike of the month. And as usual, it is behind us, but it is the specialized S-Works Tarmac. Uh, I went to America to see this bike at the launch. Um, I thought I'd take dibs on that one. Sorry, guys. Um, the Specialized were very, very excited about this bike. Um, it's already won a handful of races, I think, uh, more than likely under Peter Sagan. Uh, Dan Martin, Philip Gilbert has definitely won a race uh, riding this bike, and all those guys love it. So the Tarmac has always been the Specialized GC bike. It's the bike that Constador used to ride when he was riding on special bikes. Um, Nibs. Nibbly, et cetera, all the greats that climb I, I really like it. I've been riding it uh, and I've been looking for that spark to, to enjoy my cycling again, uh, especially heading into the winter months. It's almost sort of a bit of a drag to get out in the cold. This morning it was pretty cold. Um, and this bike has done that. I mean, yes, the ultralight version is costing £9,000. What's the difference with the ultralight version? Uh, it's the paint, basically. Uh, so they strip it down, a lot like what you're doing with your... Uh, hill climb yeah. project. Uh, they strip the paint down, apply a really thin layer and then a really thin layer of lacquer on top of that uh, and it comes in that colour scheme. Following 
the tradition at the moment, the, the sort of trend, they've dropped that rear stay um, and sort of squared the seat post as well. Is that for aero then? In, uh, into a D shape for the seat post, but yes, that is slightly for aero and slightly for compliance. Um, but the overall package is lighter than the previous tarmac. Uh, because of technology and carbon and the way they've used it. And so they use their FACT-12 carbon now, uh, and they've basically been able to reduce the size of all their tubing. So all these little pieces, uh, including a brand new reworked fork, um, add to a more aerodynamic ride. They're saying it's probably as fast as their original Venge, um, which was their aerodynamic bike before they moved it on with the Vice cockpit, etc. Um, so they've improved the aerodynamics a lot, um, but it rides beautifully. It's, it's racy, it feels sharp, it's not on the edge and it just feels super light and you feel like, you know, this is a bike that you want to race. Uh, and it's such a cliche, but it's kind of like you just want to just want to get out and ride and ride fast. I want one. I think you're in love. I'm jealous. I want one. I would I would have stolen that one, but it's the wrong size for me. Well, if you whack like a 160 stem on and an extra long seat post, you might be all right. It might affect things a little bit, um, but it's great. It's a great ride. I mean, the wheels, the tires. The Durace Di2 group set all complement it to make it look super swished. Those tan wall tyres, though, right? Uh, but obviously, the S-Works Tarmac is the high-end option. You can buy uh, lower-level uh, grades of the Tarmac, uh, and we'll have a link in our description. So that's the end of this month's edition. But um, by all means, let us know in the comments section if there's any particular products that are new and exciting that you would like to see us uh, include next month, and uh, we'll do our best to include some of them. Uh, until then, see you next time. See you later. You can buy uh, lower level uh, grades of the tarmac uh, and we'll have a link in our description. And uh, thanks for watching, it's the end of the, the program. Uh. <laughs> 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 right, one more time. Do it. Do it. Can't we just take what he said and just seamlessly stitch with what right, you'll okay. say? Okay. So that's the end of this month's edition.